Oh, hey, what? Oh, this old thing? This, this is just my uh, LED matrix hat. Yeah, no, I wear this all the time, actually. Keep six feet away, yeah, I find that very handy. Like that one, to be within six feet of people, and this helps, you know. People kind of get that message without me having to say it, and, and that kind of thing, so. Some would call it crooked, I call it jaunty. You gotta project your message. They said that uh, LED matrixes wouldn't amount to anything and would never save a life, but here we are. I feel safer, don't you? Yeah, I always wear it shopping to the uh, grocery store and to the pharmacy and the other places that I may go. So besides the fashion show, what are we actually gonna talk about today in Dave's shop? Well, today in my shop, we're gonna melt my meter, literally, as we talk about the charging of USB-C, high capacity, high current, high drain devices. What does that mean? Pretty much anything over 25 watts. So Nintendo Switch, Razer, Razer Pro, MacBook, MacBook Pro, anything that's USB and that takes a fairly high current. We'll even let the magic smoke out of an 84 watt unit before we're done torture testing it along the way. Rest assured though, the USB-C spec can deliver it. The way it works, as I understand it anyway, is that the VNs start out as basically five volt ends like conventional USB and they progressively negotiate their way up all the way to 20 volts if possible and they can take up to five amps, giving you that 100 watts. That's a ton of power and there's not a lot of hardware that I'll trust with that. Uh, the Apple stuff does seem high quality. The MacBook Pro charger, the 96 watt wall charger, I've never seen one fail, I'm sure they have, but uh, every one I've ever had has been good quality. For some reason, their cable is the thinnest you can find. I don't know if it's made with superconducting polonium or what the heck they put in it, but it's tiny and skinny for a 100 watt cable. So both their charger and their cable seem bulletproof and have really earned my trust. It's when you start getting things off Amazon and eBay with kind of nonsensical name brands like Happy Charge, uh, that's when you run into problems. So when this charger fails and it melts, and then I try it a second time, and it still does the same thing, I write to the manufacturer. Join me right after the lab test in order to find out the results and what the manufacturer has to say about them. Hey, well, with that, let's put away our silly hats and get down to business, shall we? All right, let's start off with what you probably think of as a battery pack and a charging cable and find out what that actually puts out. A nice quality anchor unit here. First, we'll ask the Mac. Dear Mac, what do you think? You think 12 watts? That's not very much. In reality, only 11. Because that's about all that that standard is capable of. You can double it up on a quick charge, but quick charge is primarily a cell phone standard. But quick charge isn't supported on laptops, so we'll step up to USB-C. 65 watts here. And indeed, it's pushing 60. Close enough. It's the real deal. Let's go check what the Mac thinks. And it thinks it's in a 65 watt class, based on the negotiated voltage and amperage. Part of the beauty of these USB-C packs, at least the ones I've encountered, is that they're bi-directional, so you can charge them through the USB-C port as well. Which means, in this case, we'll find out what it takes. 37 watts. Way faster to charge the pack than at your standard 5, 10, or even 24 watts if you can find it, but usually 10 watts is what they charge at. And if you want to charge in your car, you've got a couple options. Here's a 25 watt unit. It's kind of flush and hidden. It's got a light in it. Let's see, USB-C, plug that in. Find out what it's rated at and what it actually produces. So this one cranks up to about a little over 10 volts and about two and a half amps. And so that gives you your 25 watts and it doesn't seem to heat up too bad, which is nice. And the Mac says it's in the 30 watt class, which sounds about right. Now this is fine for recharging your Mac when it's sitting there, but uh, not for actively using it or cranking on the CPU in any way. But if you've got a MacBook Pro or a Razer Pro or even a Switch in the back seat with a kid, you're going to want at least 40 watts. Here's a 60 watt, actually 84 total because it's 60 plus 24 on the USB-A port, if you can kick it into quick charge. You may have seen this black Rugged Geek battery pack before. We boosted a Tahoe and a Range Rover with it, and it started both of those, so I'm content that it will actually charge my MacBook. And here we go, 60 watts. Rated and actual, very close, 54. 19.8 volts at 2 and 3 quarter amps. But what if you leave this thing sitting on your car seat, then you get into your car and sit on it with your short shorts? Are you in trouble? Nah. 74 degrees? You'll be fine. Burns don't really set in until at least 111 degrees, and that takes apparently many hours. So, nah, we're still fine. 91 degrees. There's no problem here. 
Anyway, as I was saying, I checked Wikipedia on this, and it turns out that to get a burn with under a second, you have to be, uh, you know, well over 150. You've got to be pushing 160. I mean, 100, that, that's warm. It's warm for electronics, I'll grant you that, but it's not even 100, so I wouldn't worry too much yet. It's got quite a load on it, but let me then plug my phone in, push it a little harder. It's just another 10 watts or so at best. You know what? I shouldn't guess. I went to college. I got a degree. It was in science. I should get a meter. I got a lot of meters. I got spare meters. I got fancy meters. I got VFD meters. I got LCD meters. I wonder if my love for meters is related to having a science degree or vice versa. Hmm, look, fancy meter. I don't think so. Let's see. Welcome. Five times almost two, so nine watts. Not bad. But what we expected from this kind of port. So that'll put about... 70 watts total on this thing. Ooh, and it is warming up a little now. 114. Well, if you sat on it for a long time, you would burn. So do not, I repeat, do not sit on it for a long time. If you find it uncomfortably hot while sitting on it, remove yourself immediately. Let's unplug this one, because I don't really want to overload it. Let's see what it'll do just on the USB-C side. Not that it was overloading. I mean, it's still 10 under its... 14 under its rated power, so... Just speeding things along. But now back to just USB-C. Note the clock zooming along here in moments of inactivity. We're along at 15 minutes total at this point, and only like three minutes real time, just so you are aware. It's not heating up as fast as you may think it is, but it is now at 126 degrees at 15 minutes, which is pretty toasty. Now, if I have one complaint with these Rugged Geek meters, it's that the uh, display tends to read, oh, 180, 20, 0. It's not very linear, so I gotta keep an eye on it here. Oh, I see 32. What am I going to do? Oh, yeah. It's not like I just have one of these things. I got backups for my backups of my backup. Actually, I had them out of my cars in order to charge them up, and that kind of what gave me the idea to do this. So, let's see. All right, let's check this thing. It's 144. That's truly gross. And it's pretty hot. There's a temperature, too. All right, we're just cracking the 20-minute mark, so let's check it again. Where are we at now? 149. It has not plateaued out yet. It is still warming up, and we don't have much, and you know, there's no additional load. We're still just pushing under 60, so I'm surprised it's running that hot, but it is. Let's see where we're at. 153, Eros con polo. That's but one of the many dishes you could prepare. Actually, you probably couldn't, but you could serve it at 153. Uh, let's get the fire extinguisher handy, because I'm not liking this thing. This concerns me more from the prospect of what if you just left it in your car with your MacBook charge and this thing's 150 degrees cooking away in your leather seats. Is it going to melt them? Is it going to set fire? No, it's not going to set fire, obviously. Not till 451. At least not this paper that it's sitting on. That'll be safe till 451. But 158 takes a lot of power to make that much heat, and our battery is starting to show it, so almost time to swap that puppy out. Hmm, do people still use puppy as a random object? I know I do. Let's see where we're at. 164. This puppy is hot. All right, our battery is plummeting rapidly, so get the other one ready, and let's swap it over. 6%. Ah! Oh, never mind. It's just the light. As a software guy, whenever there's a bright flash and I'm working on electronics, I get a little worried. All right, I'll swap over battery as fast as I can so it has as little chance to cool down as possible, but I imagine it will cool down a little bit indeed. I'll just check it really quick with the uh, thermal gun, and we'll be back on our way. So after this, I keep it running. I run down this battery pack, and then I plug it into the Stanley and leave it, and make sure it doesn't get any hotter. And it seems to indeed top out at that 160 range. So the thing is, well, let's wait until you see me with this plugged into the old Stanley here. So I do a couple other tests. I run the GoPro itself off of it. I run the battery pack charging system off it. I pull a couple extra loads, it never gets much harder, and it plateaus out at 164, which is... Well, I figured if it's hot enough to burn you, it's also probably hot enough to fry an egg, and I looked it up, and yep, 144 to 150 is all you need, so I'm putting on a glove. So with the second little pack exhausted, all I'm going to do is just plug it into the big pack, leave it, take some temperature to... I didn't expect to do any more recording at this point, because I figured it had plateaued and was done, except... Problem was, it kind of fell apart when I touched it because it had melted the plastic of the meter. So that's a problem. Yeah, it's not going back together there, Dave. I know you look surprised. 
and you are surprised because surprised and annoyed because you broke my meter and it would have been cooler if you would have done it during the actual test instead of during the after test but hey at least i was still filming so it was at the 40 minute mark if you're keeping track usb piece stuck in the actual outlet still well there's two problems with this one is i'm having trouble believing they would design it to run it this hot and number two i'd hate to put a review on the internet based on a bad unit or something so i'm going to try and replicate the result off camera here I've got a spare copy of the charger over here on the right, and we'll just run the test again with the big battery pack, and I'll keep track, and we'll find out what happens. The despicable me dude has his minions, and I have my tiny little meters, of which I will use up three today. I don't know how I go through so many of these things, but, well, I guess baking them at 165 and giving them a twist doesn't help. That's one way to lose one for sure. But I'll let you know the results of the actual test on the other side, so see you after the fade. So, what did we learn about this charger? Fancy charger. Well, it's still for sale on Amazon. It has two types of reviews. It has five star, wow, it's the most powerful one available, which is probably true. And one star, wow, it almost burned my car down, which may well be true, who knows. That's the two types of reviews you tend to find on it. I sense it's good until you put it through its paces and really charge it hard. And the problem is a fully depleted MacBook will work it hard because it's a big battery and it's gonna charge it pretty fast. Especially if you turn that MacBook on and leave the MacBook running while it's charging, then you're, then you're, I don't wanna say toast, but. What other toys did we look at today? Da -da -da. Here we have, am I projecting? Yes, Rugged Geek. As you can see, it has some fancy ports on the back here. These, for their size, I cannot speak highly enough. I assume they're just like 18650s inside and there's nothing particularly magic about them. I haven't taken one apart yet. They don't have a huge capacity. Well, let me check. Don't burn your head. Ah, the concentrated power of all the LEDs, ow. 35 watt hours, not impressive. I don't think it's not impressive because if I look at my uh, 72 watt hours, 72 watt hours. This is just your vanilla anchor, anchor, however you say it. USB-A type, charge it with micro USB, you bought it five years ago type battery pack. It has twice the power of the Rugged Geek, but what does the Rugged Geek offer? 600 amps of peak current. That's crazy. And it must do it too, because it like spins over my big block V8, so it does it. Not for long, but it does it. Oh, but to be fair, I've never damaged the Rugged Geek charger. I have melted booster cables with it, and yeah, that was it, I did it. I melted the cable pack, but the actual unit was fine. The ZMI power pack, beautiful is it not? By Zimmy Corporation in China. Well done, Zimmy. It does get a little warm, like, not, 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 not like charger warm. But it is, you know, I set it on the sofa next to me during the power outage we had the other day, and I plunked it down and ran the Thunderbolt cable, or, you know, USB-C cable. So one of the first things I did to make sure I was not being unduly concerned about the temperatures was look at what's normal for electronics. And I was getting fairly low numbers. I was like, why are they so cautious? So then I looked at Wikipedia for thermal burns and they started at 111 and they get progressively faster until you get to about 160, which is the under one second. So the fact that this thing is over 160 and that will burn you in under one second seems a little hot. Let's take a look at where I found that information. Here we go. The minimum temperature that can cause a burn in a finite amount of time is 111 degrees. I guess I would like cook your skin really, really slowly over six hours with a heating blanket or something really weird. And develop in less than a second if the exposure is at least 160. That's the interesting part. So my plan was to just simply return it to Amazon, but then I was afraid, what if it gets recycled? What if somebody reuses it? Should I put a note with it? And I kind of wanted somebody to look at this thing because I'm like, I don't think it's sealed safe. I don't want to just send it back and just say, hey, next guy's problem, not mine. And I got a response back from the seller that they had spoken to the engineer. Now, I don't know if they necessarily meant the engineer of the actual device or their engineer or a engineer, but what did they actually? I have referred to the engineer with your review. So the English here is not 100%, but it's probably better than my Mandarin and Cantonese. I was told that the design spec allows highest temperatures to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. 300 degrees Fahrenheit inside the charger before thermal protection, which means after a period of high powering, finger touch gets sense of pain on the surface of the charger. So it's gonna get super hot inside and it will cause pain if you touch it on the outside. That's okay though. And the engineer considered the circumstances and set protection term to avoid harm to the user. So apparently 
298 degrees would not cause harm to the user. There is no need to feel threatened for high thermal surface while using. Lots of users have got through with this. Lots of users have got through with this. You're just not tough, Dave. You probably can't even melt butter at 300 degrees. What's your problem, Dave? It's still for sale, so party on. Get your own now. Let me take my Ultra Geek. No, my Rugged Geek. My Sorry, Ultra Geek. And I'll plug in by heavy duty. And then I'll plug the charger into it. And you can see it has a green light. Let's see if we can get a clear shot of this guy without me in the picture. These are a nice little meter. I just ordered a full stainless steel version of this to see how it works, because it looks even better. Actually, this is the one that melted. Let's see if it still works. Ta-da, it still works. So, if it were up to me, I would probably not use the USB-C charger unattended. I would probably use it and monitor it. And then, if I had a better choice, I would use the USB-C battery pack. What other choices do you have? Well, there's always the on-the-go MacBook charger. But what about when you can't plug it in? Well, a couple choices. One, take your own plug-in. Now, that of course requires the 12 volt car outlet. And this is a 200 watt unit. So why do I want a 200 watt for a 100 watt charger? Well, I want some headroom. Also, cooling fan. If you get the small ones, yeah, they put out 100, but they don't do 100 continuous. There's just no way that they can do that kind of conversion from 12 through a transformer up to 100 with that kind of load on them and not have any kind of active cooling. Or at least I've never seen one that did it well. If you have, kudos to you and let me know which one it is. I would love to own one. And let me know if there's enough interest in this kind of approach to AC power, something that uh, you don't see a lot of, the battery pack. So this is an AC battery pack, 27,000 milliamp hours, and it has an outlet on it, which allows me, like so. Which is a shame that I have to do this. Why? Because look at, look at USB-C. It has USB-C, but USB-C output, five watts. This one even has like magnetic charging. It has British outlets. Or at least European, I assume it's look British to me. Oh, well, there's two problems. One, if it's not loaded on the inverter, it turns off right away because it turns off when it doesn't think there's sufficient load to keep running and an idle MacBook is not sufficient load when it's not charging. And other smaller appliances tend to not keep it going as well. So there's a few problems with it. But the biggest is the whole it turns off randomly. So this one says it's 41,000 watt hours or 41, no, it's, that would be awesome. Can you imagine? Home fusion. <clears throat> yes. So. Home fusion aside, no, it's 41,000 milliamp hours. Now, this one says 5 volt 3 amps, but I did not see it produce that. I saw 5 volt 1 amp. Now, maybe it just needed to negotiate who knows whose fault that was, but it's like at best 5 to 15. You're not getting 60 to 80 out of this. Sorry, even though it's got huge batteries in it, 5 volt 3 amps max on the USB C. Not impressive. This does not offer USB C. But it does have an outlet port, which interestingly on the front is spec'd at 19 volts and 3.5 and amps. So it's awfully close to being able to satisfy the USB-C spec, but it was probably predated it for all I know. It'd be nice if they came out with one. If you're listening, Mr. and Mrs. Rugged Geek, whoever you are, we could use a good USB-C battery pack. Even at a duty cycle. I'd live with that. Turn off the light. It's that time again. Time to say goodnight. Ow, it burns. <laughs> can you imagine? Well, thanks for joining me, and I would encourage you, if you're new to this channel, as I am, then you should subscribe so that the channel continues to exist and you get notified of future episodes. It's like a symbiotic kind of thing. You enjoy them, I make them, I make them, you enjoy them, vice versa. Not, then we don't. But if you don't subscribe, and you do enjoy them, and I do make them, what madness is that? So subscribe. Thank you. All right, well, like the hat says, it's time to say goodnight. So thanks for joining me here in the shop, and I'll see you next time. See you later. Thank you.